Amorphati, a term from the age-old wisdom of Stoicism, translates to love of fate or love of one's fate. It's an embrace of life in its entirety, with all its turbulence and tranquility. Seneca, a Stoic philosopher, once wrote, Fate leads the willing and drags along the reluctant, a profound reminder that life's flow is inevitable and our resistance or acceptance shapes our journey. Now, ask yourself, have you ever faced a moment so challenging that you wished it away? Or have you embraced every twist and turn of your life, recognizing them as the very fabric of your being? Let's discover the stoic habits of how to get through life's most difficult situations. In the heart of ancient Rome, amidst the dust and roar of the Colosseum, was a gladiator named Cassius. Unlike his companions, who dreamed of glory and victory, Cassius harbored a deep longing for peace. Captured young and thrust into the brutal world of gladiatorial combat, he had faced his fate with defiance, every fight a rebellion against the life fate had chosen for him. One dusk, as shadows lengthened over Rome, Cassius found a scrap of parchment beneath his cell door. Curious, he unfolded it to reveal a passage that seemed to speak directly to his weary heart. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. These words, attributed to Marcus Aurelius, struck a chord within him. They whispered of a different kind of strength, one not found on the battleground but within the depths of the soul. As days turned to weeks, Cassius delved deeper into the Stoic teachings. The words of Aurelius became his mantra, a source of solace in the solitude of his cell. He began to see his life not as a series of unfortunate events, but as a path uniquely his own, a journey that required acceptance rather than resistance. This shift in perspective did not weaken his prowess in the arena, but instead filled him with a profound tranquility. His fights became less about survival and more about living each moment fully embracing his fate with dignity and courage. The day of his final battle arrived, a confrontation that all knew would seal his fate. Yet, as he stepped into the arena, Cassius felt an overwhelming sense of peace. He had accepted his destiny, not with resignation, but with a heart full of gratitude for the journey that had led him here. He fought with a grace and serenity that belied the violence of his surroundings, a testament to the strength he had found in acceptance. When the battle ended not in death but in an unexpected victory, Cassius knew that his greatest triumph was not overcoming his opponent, but in embracing his fate, in finding peace amidst chaos. To you, the viewer, watching this tale of courage and tranquility, know that Cassius's story is not just a relic of the past, but a beacon for us all. Like him, we face battles, some external, many internal. Yet the essence of navigating life's most difficult situations lies not in avoiding them, but in embracing them with an open heart. Let Cassius's journey inspire you to find strength in acceptance, to view every challenge as an opportunity to grow, and to remember that peace comes not from controlling the world around us, but from harmonizing with it. Embrace your fate with dignity, just as Cassius did, and find in that acceptance a wellspring of courage and tranquility. This is how we navigate life's most tumultuous storms, not by fighting against the wind, but by learning to sail with it. In embracing Amor Fati, let us find the grace to accept what we cannot change, the strength to change what we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. In the early hours of dawn, as the first light caressed the ancient stones of Rome, a solitary figure stood atop Capitoline Hill. Gaius, a senator whose service to the Republic had been long and distinguished, gazed upon the city below. Rome, with its bustling forums, majestic temples and sprawling markets, lay enveloped in a tranquil silence that belied the turmoil of the day before. A political crisis threatened to unravel the fabric of the Republic, and Gaius, known for his wisdom and virtue, felt the weight of Rome's future pressing upon his shoulders. As he watched the city awaken, Gaius recalled a passage from Seneca that he had pondered many times. 
True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. The words resonated with him now more than ever. From this height, the monumental problems that had seemed so insurmountable seemed to shrink before his eyes. The sharp edges softened by the vast expanse of history that stretched out beneath him. This moment of reflection brought a profound realization. Gaius understood that the trials and tribulations of his time were but ripples in the eternal flow of Rome's destiny. His own worries, the political strife that consumed his thoughts, were transient shadows in the grand tapestry of the Republic's story. Embracing this stoic view from above, Gaius found a sense of peace and clarity. He saw that his role was not to resist the tide of events, but to navigate them with wisdom, always keeping the common good at the forefront of his actions. As the sun rose higher, casting golden light over the rooftops of Rome, Gaius descended from the hill with a renewed spirit. He approached the day's challenges, not as burdens, but as opportunities to contribute to the legacy of the Republic, to practice virtue and foster unity. Addressing to you directly, witnessing this ancient tale of reflection and realization, know that the wisdom of Gaius's experience holds a message for us all. In our lives too, we face moments of crisis and uncertainty, times when our personal and collective futures hang in the balance. Let us take inspiration from Gaius and adopt the stoic practice of viewing our lives from above. By doing so, we can gain perspective on our troubles, seeing them not as insurmountable obstacles, but as parts of a larger, ever-changing landscape. Remember the trials we endure are transient, and it is within our power to face them with grace and courage, always striving for the greater good. In embracing this broader view, we can navigate life's most difficult situations with a sense of peace and purpose. Let us learn from the past, not to be burdened by it, but to be guided towards a future marked by wisdom, compassion, and resilience. Like Gaius, may we find strength in perspective, understanding that our greatest contributions often arise from how we respond to the challenges before us. In the heart of Rome, amidst its marble splendors and echoing forums, lived an architect named Maximus. Gifted with vision far beyond his time, Maximus dreamt of creating a monument that would not only celebrate Rome's grandeur, but also inspire future generations. His designs, however, were often met with skepticism. His peers, clinging to traditional forms, mocked his daring ideas as flights of fancy. Despite the derision, Maximus poured his soul into the monument commissioned to celebrate Rome's latest conquests. Day by day, the structure began to rise, a testament to his relentless spirit. But fate, as it often does, intervened in the most unexpected way. An earthquake, fierce and unforgiving, shook Rome to its core, leaving devastation in its wake. The partially completed monument, Maximus's dream made tangible, lay in ruins. While the city mourned its losses, Maximus stood before the rubble of his work, not with despair, but with a spark of revelation. Where others saw catastrophe, he saw possibility. The earthquake had not just destroyed, it had cleared the ground, offering a rare chance to rebuild, to reimagine what could be. Embracing the stoic principle of turning obstacles into pathways, Maximus set to work, his mind ablaze with renewed purpose. With each passing day, as Rome rebuilt itself from the ashes, so too did Maximus's monument rise transformed. His innovative ideas, once dismissed, now took shape in stone and light, weaving resilience and beauty into a structure that spoke not just of Rome's past victories, but of its undying spirit. When at last the monument was unveiled, it stood not as a mere structure, but as a masterpiece, a beacon of hope and a testament to the power of seeing beyond the immediate, to the potential that lies within adversity. To you watching this unfold, remember Maximus's story when you face your own earthquakes, whether they shake your world or your heart. 
His journey teaches us that within every obstacle lies the seed of an equal or greater opportunity. It's not the calamity that defines our path, but our response to it. Let this be a reminder that when the ground beneath you trembles, when the structures of your life seem to crumble, there is always a chance to build something new, something perhaps even more beautiful than before. Embrace these moments not with fear but with the creativity and courage of Maximus. See beyond the debris of the present and envision the masterpiece that could emerge from it. This is how we get through life's most difficult situations, not by lamenting our fate but by transforming it, just as Maximus transformed his. In embracing our challenges with open hearts and inventive minds, we too can turn our obstacles into pathways, carving out our own triumphs in the face of adversity. Let the story of Maximus inspire you to build your masterpieces from the ruins, for in every ending, there lies the promise of a new beginning. In the heart of ancient Rome, where tradition and duty wove the fabric of daily life, there lived a vestal virgin named Lucia. Sworn to a life of chastity and service, Lucia had devoted herself to the sacred flames, a guardian of the city's spiritual heart. Yet fate, with its indifferent gaze, cast upon her a shadow she had never foreseen. Wrongly accused of breaking her sacred vows, Lucia found herself cast into confinement, her future hanging in the balance, subject to the harsh judgment of Rome's stringent laws. As the days turned to weeks, the isolation of her cell became a crucible for transformation. In the silence of her confinement, Lucia discovered a scroll hidden within the walls. Left perhaps by a predecessor or a sympathetic soul, it was the teachings of Epictetus, a stoic philosopher who spoke of inner freedom and the power of acceptance. One passage struck her profoundly. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. These words, though simple, seem to illuminate the darkness of her predicament with a clarity that pierced the gloom of her despair. Lutia began to see her ordeal not as a punishment, but as a path to a deeper understanding of herself and the world around her. She realized that her worth was not tethered to the accusations leveled against her, but resided in her ability to maintain her virtue and composure in the face of adversity. Each day in confinement became a lesson in the stoic practice of finding value in every experience, turning her trial into a crucible for the refinement of her spirit. Through her ordeal, Lucia transformed her cell into a place of enlightenment, not just for herself, but for those around her. Guards and fellow prisoners alike were drawn to the serenity and wisdom that seemed to radiate from her. Lucia taught them that freedom was not a condition of the body, but of the mind, and that by accepting one's fate while upholding virtue, one could find peace in any circumstance. When the day of her trial arrived, Lucia faced her accusers with a composed grace that confounded her detractors and inspired her supporters. The outcome, whether it be vindication or condemnation, mattered little to her now. Lucia had discovered a deeper sense of purpose and freedom in the acceptance of her fate, knowing that her integrity remained intact, unblemished by the falsehoods cast upon her. To those who hear Lucia's story, let her journey remind you that the value of our experiences is not dictated by their outward appearance, but by what we choose to take from them. In the darkest moments, when injustice and hardship seem to cloud our path, remember that within us lies the power to transform our trials into treasures of wisdom and strength. Embrace your challenges, as Lucia did, with the understanding that every moment of our lives offers an opportunity for growth and enlightenment. Our true freedom lies in our response to the world around us, in our ability to find value in every experience, and in our unwavering commitment to virtue, regardless of the trials we face. Like Lucia, may we all find our enlightenment, teaching ourselves and others the strength that comes from the acceptance of fate.
Picture yourself weaving a tapestry, each thread representing a different experience of your life. Some threads are vibrant, filled with joy and success, while others are dark, symbolizing the trials and tribulations you've faced. This tapestry, in all its complexity, is your life, unique, irreplaceable, and inherently beautiful. Embracing Amor Fati, the love of one's fate, means to cultivate gratitude for this entire tapestry, appreciating the richness that both light and dark threads contribute to the whole. Cleanthes, a Stoic philosopher, once remarked, He who has learned to seek nothing but what the laws of the universe will send him, possesses all that he wants. This profound statement captures the essence of cultivating gratitude for life's tapestry. It's an acknowledgement that the universe, in its wisdom, weaves together a series of events and experiences that, while not always understood or welcomed, are essential to the fabric of our being. Cultivating gratitude for this tapestry encourages us to accept each moment as a gift, understanding that even the most challenging experiences offer lessons in strength, resilience, and compassion. This perspective shifts our focus from what we lack to the abundance that already exists within our lives. It teaches us to embrace the beauty of the present, to find joy in the simple act of being alive, and to appreciate the intricate pattern of our existence. The power of this lesson lies in its ability to transform our relationship with life itself. Instead of resisting what comes our way, we learn to flow with the rhythm of the universe, trusting in the wisdom of its design. By doing so, we open our hearts to a deeper level of contentment, peace, and understanding. We learn to see the tapestry of our lives not as a series of disconnected events, but as a harmonious whole, rich with meaning and purpose. This is the art of embracing Amor Fati, finding gratitude in every twist and turn of fate, and in doing so, uncovering the profound beauty of our existence. Imagine you are standing by a river, watching its waters flow endlessly past. You reach down to touch the water, but the moment your fingers break the surface, that water is gone, replaced by more. This river, always changing yet always the same, serves as a powerful metaphor for life itself. Just as you cannot touch the same water twice, you cannot live the same moment again. Life flows in a perpetual state of change, a constant reminder that nothing remains static. Epictetus, a sage of Stoicism, once said, It is not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This insight is particularly relevant when considering the lesson of embracing change as a constant. Change, whether it's desired or not, whether it brings joy or pain, is unavoidable. But our perception of and reaction to change can transform our experience of life. The power of this lesson lies in its call to embrace change, not merely as an external event to be endured, but as an integral part of our existence to be welcomed. By acknowledging change as the only constant, we free ourselves from the illusion of permanence and open our hearts to the flow of experience. This acceptance allows us to live more fully in the present, appreciating the beauty of the transient, the fleeting, and the impermanent. Embracing change encourages us to let go of our attachment to specific outcomes and to trust in the process of life. It teaches us resilience as we learn to navigate through life's inevitable ups and downs with grace and equanimity. By welcoming change, we align ourselves with the natural order of the universe, finding peace in the understanding that every end is a new beginning, every loss is a space for something new to enter. This lesson, at its core, is about liberation, from fear, from resistance, from the suffering that comes from clinging to the illusion of stability. It invites us to dance with the rhythm of life, to find joy in the journey of becoming, and to see change not as a threat, but as the very essence of our growth and evolution. In embracing change as a constant, we truly embrace Amor Fati, loving our fate for all the transformations it brings. As our journey today comes to a close, 
Let us remember the words of Marcus Aurelius, a beacon of stoic wisdom. Accept whatever comes to you woven in the pattern of your destiny for what could more aptly fit your needs. If you seek to continue this journey, to delve deeper into the mysteries of Stoicism and the art of embracing Amor Fati, I invite you to subscribe to our channel. Like this video if the flames of curiosity and the thirst for wisdom burn within you. Together, let us walk this path, guided by the stars of ancient philosophy, uncovering the serenity and strength that lie in loving our fate.